Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel, I'm Rob and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today, we're jumping into some malicious compliance. Our first story today comes to us from Dimitri V. Make me do your safety inspection? Okay, let's jump right in. A comment in another thread about a QA inspector getting reprimanded for finding too many quality problems reminded me of this. Long ago, I worked in the back warehouse of a home decor store. Think tacky vases and such, only cheaper and worse quality junk than you're imagining. No, still worse than that. Little further, there you go. Anyway, the store manager was all about the status quo. If he was at his desk playing solitaire, things were good. If he had anything to do, they weren't. In his words, if he had to work, it's because someone else screwed up. One thing that disrupts the status quo is safety issues. Why, that might make a manager have to reach for a form or even get up from his desk. Fortunately for him, the warehouse supervisor, who was a personal friend of his, which was the only reason such a useless waste of employment could have any title other than fired, was responsible for the safety back there. So safety issues were well in hand, which is to say, ignored and dismissed. Naturally, there were many safety problems, one of them being that boxes were often stacked too close to the fire sprinklers. One day, I saw boxes actually leaning against them. I don't know how fragile those little glass fuse things are, but in addition to not wanting to die in an inferno, I also didn't want to be drenched in filthy water if someone jostled the shelf. So I said something to the supervisor, not knowing that the manager happened to be walking by behind me. That meant that something might need to be done, gasp. Naturally, the supervisor took responsibility and called a meeting to make sure everyone is aware of the law and not to do that. Just kidding, he made me move the boxes. But that wasn't enough petty punishment, he also made me responsible for the monthly facility safety inspections. The safety inspection is a full building walkthrough and check of equipment and anything safety related. Fire exits, ladders, pallet jacks, and so on. Or, if you're a spineless half-witted beneficiary of nepotism, lazily walking around holding a clipboard and your phone, only paying attention to the latter, probably forwarding lame jokes to friends you think you have, and pencil whipping the safety part, he saw it as pointless busywork and undoubtedly thought it would be the same for me. But here's the thing, if you sign off that something faulty is okay, then there's an incident and someone gets hurt you can be responsible because you signed off on it. Well, I'm not about to have that fall on my shoulders. You want a safety inspection? I will perform a safety inspection. I tested every emergency light in the building. Half of them were dead. Fire extinguishers not serviced at the regular intervals? Noted. More boxes close to fire sprinklers? Documented with pictures. Inadequately stocked first aid kits? Written down. No safety pins on pallet racks? That's not up to code. Shot wheel bearings on hand trucks. Why, a wheel could catch and tip a load on someone. We can't have that. I asked coworkers for anything they knew of. Thanks, I hadn't seen that broken weld on a railing. Supervisor Boy's inspections took him a few minutes. Mine was close to two hours. The second best part of all this, the safety inspection reports went to corporate. A smarter idiot might have wanted to check mine first but it never occurred to the useless supervisor. Even he would have noticed the supplemental pages stapled to mine, corporate sure did, and the best part, responsibility for fixing every single issue fell on him and on the manager to make sure it was done. As a bonus, even they knew better than to retaliate against me right after I documented safety issues in writing to corporate and because it would look bad to pencil whip documented issues or not take care of them before the next inspection, Supervisor Boy had a lot of work to do that month. For some reason, he didn't want me to do the safety inspections anymore. Well, OP, honestly, I think you might have helped save somebody's life. You may not know it right away, but down the road, it definitely could be a thing. You know why? All safety regulations have a story behind them. There's a reason they became a safety regulation written in somebody else's blood. Not good. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our next story today comes to us from Peace in Greece. Let me go? 
Fine, you'll lose millions. Let's jump right in. This was around 10 years ago. I've always been very technically minded and was able to read blueprints, construct complex devices, weld, MIG, TIG, stick, certified in fact among other things. I took a high paying job with a company that made several things for railroads. The job entailed most of my skills I mentioned above. It was a very small department, in fact, there were only two to three of us, but we got along great and challenged each other, which led to higher production. Sadly, the one other guy in my department left for a better job, which left me by myself. My supervisor was great as well, liked to joke around with me, left me alone to focus on my work, and had my back when I needed him. We actually assembled signal enclosures and mast and ladder houses for railroads. Fast forward to three years later and the owners buy a much bigger location and move the whole company. As you might expect, several departments get shuffled. Yep, my department gets folded into a completely different department that has no clue what I do. At first, it was fine, but it starts to go pear-shaped pretty quickly. My new supervisor seemed good at first, but I quickly realized he's a snake in the grass. For example, I had to help the prototype department assemble a new, lighter type of mast and ladder house. So I'm printing out issues and suggesting fixes, etc. New supervisor is not happy. He keeps coming over huffing, groaning under his breath, standing over my shoulder, etc. He finally interrupts and asks in an angry voice, how much longer will this take? I respond, I have four more hours today and eight hours every day after that. He looks puzzled, so I explain, this is my department, this is where I work, these are my responsibilities, so if it takes two months, that's how long it takes. Almost as if to get the last word in, he says, you work where and when I tell you, and storms off. Next day, I'm called into the office, and they force me to sign a letter that states, I now work in my new supervisor's department. Fine by me, I watch from a distance in my new department, as all the stock, hardware, parts, orders, etc. of my old department begin to rack up. And since I'm the only one that works in that department, or rather, used to work in that department, laugh out loud, nobody is doing a thing about it. After about two weeks, my old department is a disaster, with items being thrown wherever they would fit. Orders had began to miss deadlines and higher-ups wanted answers. Sure enough, I get called into the office where the new supervisor blames me for everything, but wouldn't let me get a word in. Of course, they let me go without any reason or paperwork. The look of relief on my new ex-supervisor's face when I walk out was priceless. He had no clue what was coming. I leave with a smile plastered to my face because I knew something they didn't. I was the only one that knew how to build the mast and ladder structures. I relaxed at home for around two weeks because I knew I would be getting a call from them. I ignore the first dozen calls. Then I answer, can you come back and build train new hires, etc. for your department? Sure, I said, for $20,000. Now, that may seem like a lot, but it wasn't. They made millions from these, so there really was only one option. Pay me $20,000 or lose millions. Long story short, they went back and forth with me, but finally conceded. I received $20,000 for two days work, and they were helpless. The cherry on top was my new ex-supervisor was fired for being a nitwit and costing the company $20,000. So OP was asked down in the comments if this was a one-off or they kept working there now that the ex-soup was gone, and OP said no, they just wanted them there for two days to catch up on builds and training the new guys they hired. So that kind of leads me to wonder, they caught up on four weeks of production and trained the new guy in two days? Um, hmm, interesting. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to let me know what you think the validity of this story is. Let me know in the comments down below. Our third story today comes to us from Ladybug Whisperer. Forgive me, officer, of course you know how to do your job. Let's jump right in. So this happened back around the end of 2018. I worked for a supported community living SCL company. My day-to-day -day consisted of assisting clients with developmental disabilities perform daily tasks, such as administering medication, toileting, and transportation. But a major part of what I did was behavior de-escalation. 
many individuals that are part of the IDD, Intellectually Developmentally Disabled Community, have behavioral issues that range from harmless to extremely violent. I sincerely enjoyed this part of my job. At times it was dangerous, but you would always learn so much from trying to help them regulate their emotions. A behavior is just them trying to communicate a want or a need that they have. They just don't know how to use their words sometimes. On this particular day, the client that I was closest to had a meltdown, punched holes in the wall, tore a blackboard off the wall, pushed over a large cabinet, stripped naked, threw fecal matter, the works. Mind you, this was actually pretty common for them, especially around wintertime when they missed their family. Eventually, after hours of trying on our own to calm them down, we had to call the police. When they arrived, three officers, two very kind ones, and then an arrogant bastard, my client became sort of quiet and compliant. I knew from years of working with them that that definitely was not a good sign. My supervisor also noticed this, and as we told them to watch out, the arrogant bastard stated, We know how to do our jobs, ma'am. Cue malicious compliance. So I, being the dutiful citizen I am, shut my mouth, and my supervisor did the same. We watched the client edge closer as the officers were speaking to them. I should mention, they were able to get the client to put on clothes before this. When they were within arm's reach, my client made their move. As fast as lightning, my client reached their hands down into their pants and proceeded to slap the arrogant bastard in the face with their crap-covered hand. At that point, it was assault on an officer, so they swiftly cuffed them and sent them to a holding cell at the sheriff's department until they had calmed down enough to be released. Being part of the IDD community prevented them from pressing any kind of charges on my client, so they got off pretty easy. The arrogant bastard on the other hand ended up with pink eye for two weeks. I found out later on from a state trooper friend that he was pretty disliked in general, so it made for a good laugh for them as well. Well, it seems to me that officers number one and officer number three were doing their job perfectly fine. The real trouble was caused by number two. Story number four today comes to us from Toros Prime. Want my entire department platinum certified? Sure thing. What time do you want to do the peer mentoring? Let's jump right in. So I was reminded of this recently, though the specific incident occurred almost six years ago. See, the company I worked for at the time had a tiered training system. Bronze tier meant you were qualified to do your job. Silver meant you'd gone the extra mile to really learn the ins and outs of the job and could be used to train new people in your job. Gold meant you had mastered your current position, and Platinum was generally intended to be the stepping stone to be cross-trained in different departments. Typically, Platinum training in one department was roughly equivalent to half silver in two or three other departments. So like, being Platinum trained in repair agent meant you could lend a hand in home installation and car installation, that sort of thing. Well, my store manager decided he wanted to get the bragging rights of having his entire Geek Squad department Platinum certified. So he started hounding us to do our Platinum certifications. Not actually giving us time to do them, mind you, because outside of Bronze, the trainings were voluntary. The position I held at the time, its Platinum level training was intended to be a stepping stop into management. And as a part of that, it included several transcripts from several books on management. So to be Platinum Certified, I had to finish 14 modules, with each module involving a 200 to 400 page reading assignment, followed by a report on the reading assignment to be graded by the manager, and also four one-on-one -on -one training sessions with the store manager on topic such as manpower management, customer reading, and personality conflicts. All in all, each module was estimated to take between 10 to 14 hours worth of work before a further three to four hours of work with the manager. This was all something that the manager was apparently unaware of, because when I asked him where he wanted me to turn in the first report, he brushed me off, saying the modules don't have assignments, only to have him come back three more times and get on my case and the rest of my department's case about being platinum. But then, inferring that he's not going to read the assignments and sign off on the modules, so do this training that I won't sign off on. Oh, and do it on your own time. Surprise, surprise, we weren't interested in wasting our personal time like this, so initially we ignored it. 
until he really started pushing the issue. Remember how each of the modules for the Platinum training for my position had a 200 to 400 page reading assignment? Well, using the store's printer, I printed each one of them, in color, actually did the reading of the first one and wrote the paper, and went to talk to the manager about the report. I hounded him for a week about it until I was able to corner him and show it was about the Platinum training. He was totally caught off guard that he was expected to play school teacher and visibly horrified that he would have to do so for 14 modules, plus four one-on-one -on -one sessions for five people. So that was the last we heard about him demanding everyone in the department be platinum. Remember how I printed out the readings? Well, that prompted an investigation to find out why the store had gone through more color toner in two months than it had in a year prior they eventually found that the majority was from the Platinum Learnings, and when they asked why, we pulled out the multiple email messages the store manager has sent us regarding Platinum, including the parts where he said, if we needed to print something, we could use the store printers. Turns out, most of the Platinum modules have just a 2-3 to three page worksheet and maybe a checklist. Some have a 20-30 to 30 page resource document, but only the Platinum, for my department, had 300 page books. Something to mention for anybody else who finds themselves in a situation like this is that it's very illegal, very against labor laws, for them require you to do company certified training on your own time. That's something you should be paid for, especially when they're telling you that you have to do it. Now that bit of information won't help LP because they did say that it happened about six years ago, but hopefully it helps somebody else when they find themselves in the same spot. Check out all four OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.